Good afternoon. We're back for another episode of the Windsor Wednesday show. I'm your host, Lyndon Crane, joined today by some fantastic guests from the U Windsor community. Uh, just to let you know, this is our uh, third uh, last interview session uh, before we go on to uh, the summer break. So April 7th will be the last episode of the Windsor Wednesday show until we resume again in the fall. But nonetheless, I want to introduce our guests today. We have Margaret Glore at the uh, bottom left. She's a third year Bachelor of Commerce student, a researcher and active volunteer on campus. And we'll be talking a lot about the um, extracurricular sh she's done um, while at the University of Windsor. Up in the top right, we have Chad Sutherland, Director of Operations at the Center for Human Performance and Health in the Department of Kinesiology. And then down in the bottom right, we have Jake Rondeau. He's actually an alumnus who graduated from the Bachelor of Human Kinetics. He's a special instructor and also a board member for various U Windsor committees. Jake, Chad, and Margaret, glad to have you on the show today. How are you doing, Lyndon? Thanks for having me. My, so my pleasure. And, and to kick things off, we'll, we'll start with Margaret. Uh, what opportunities at U Windsor have really amplified your interest in, in human resource management, um, seeing that you are specializing in it? So, hi, Lyndon. It's so nice to see you again. You're such a familiar face on campus, and it's so crazy to think that it's been a year since we've been there. Um, but when I initially came to Odette and I chose to study business, I'd gone in with the idea that I would be specializing in accounting. And for anybody who knows me today, they could probably all agree that they could never picture me um, in an accounting field. But the opportunities that kind of led that amplified interest in HR were the incredible professors in both the Faculty of Business and the Faculty of Women and Gender Studies which I'm double minoring in social justice studies and women and gender studies. But at the intersection of these disciplines, I found a unique and different approach to understanding human interaction and what forces drive that motivation. Um, and one of those is focusing and honing in on building emotional intelligence and empathy, um, because I think both of those skills are crucial to succeed in a field like human resources. Um, I'm currently conducting an exploratory analysis measuring organizational climate and the perceived barriers in a business environment um, as a part of my undergraduate research thesis under the supervision of um, Dr. Martha Reevely. She's the management and area chair at Odette. But engaging in these more academic conversations and being exposed to so much research and published works has expanded my understanding um, of organizational structure, team dynamics, team building, building resilience, and things like that. Um, and honestly, just caring about your employees. Um, but I'm so thankful to Dr. Reevely um, because she really took me under her wing. And it definitely wasn't what I would have seen myself doing um, in HR, as first year me was interested in accounting. Um, but she shared so much of her knowledge with me and that really fueled my interest in HR. Um, but being in such a diverse environment, um, it's exciting to look at the new opportunities to cultivate and support the success of others within HR. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, I think the biggest part of that has been building my understanding of emotional intelligence um, and how they can relate and enhance uh, business activities. Well, it definitely sounds like there's a, a lot on your plate, Margaret. But um, like like you said, you're you're doing your thesis, you're uh, double minoring, you're in co-op, I believe, um, and a part of many other clubs. How do you balance it all? <laughs> um, honestly, Lyndon, it's really challenging because I do it all from home. I do it all from my room and one desk. Um, and I admit I'm not the best at scheduling and organizing. Somehow it gets done. Um, but it's really challenging, um, but it's rewarding too. And I think it's those human connections like we're having right now, just this conversation that really keep you motivated, especially in a time like this. So will, any advice for students that probably doing the same thing as you have a lot on their plate looking to get involved in their first year of university? Um, I would say don't put too much pressure on yourself to try and get involved in everything. I think I did that in first year and um, I'd never even thought of research. So I think by loading my plate so heavy in first year, um, I hadn't even thought about research 
So when I went into third year and I started doing my own um, research, I had uh, much more of an open mind. So I would just say, um, keep open mind and um, don't feel too much pressure. Like if something's not working for you, if a club or committee or anything like that, um, don't feel pressure to stick around and stay. There's so many other opportunities um, for success within the University of Windsor. Um, so just keep looking and you'll find your place. <laughs> Awesome. Great advice, Margaret. I appreciate that. And I know many other students watching do as well. Uh, but now I want to flip the switch over to, to Jake at the bottom right. Um, Jake, if you could summarize, I guess, three lessons that you've learned during your time as an HK student. Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Lynn. And I appreciate it. It's a great question, too. Um, it, uh, the faculty of HK is a really interesting one. It, it's such a, a family that that you know it's an endless amount of life lessons. It was such an incredible experience. But if if I had to take three things away, I would probably say that um, first is a lot of students come into that program with some tie to sport in, in their background, and you really learn to apply some of those intangible uh, skills in an academic and professional setting. The one that jumps out the most is teamwork. Um, the, the, the curriculum is built with, with a lot of group work and even not in group study and in individual study, you're everyone, you and your co and your fellow students are there in the building together, working together, constantly helping each other learn. Um, so teamwork and, and, you know, performance under pressure, um, the ability to, you know, recognize, identify a mistake and correct it and move on without losing confidence immediately. And, so, so you get a lot of sort of that being part of the foundation of the program. You, you really learn the, the affirmation of the value of, of, of some of those skills and how you can apply them in academia, which is a pretty cool lesson. Uh, the other would be the enormous breadth of career opportunities. There's, you don't, I don't think you, you really realize, or at least I didn't, going into a program like that compared to maybe a program that's a little bit more prescriptive in, in a defined vocational role, a program like this, um, your career can be in, in anything you can think of to do with physical activity or movement science. So, you know, people come out of the program, alumnus are phys ed teachers and coaches or um, sport managers, uh, work in sales and marketing or um, uh, just recreation faci facilities management, health promotion, an enormous breadth. And then on the movement side, ergonomy, um, exercise physiology, people go on to be medical doctors and chiros and therapists. And so it, it can almost feel a little bit overwhelming in your first year. And it's a great uh, point Margaret made about not not jamming your plate in your first year, because you really are sort of in in HK, especially looking at, you know, there I can do anything. <laughs> so trying to trying to narrow that path into uh, into what it what most interests you is 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 a fun process so that would be the second big thing that that I was really opened uh, opened up to and and the third I would say would be the importance of giving back um like I as I mentioned it's a family atmosphere and and it is really um like your family is it's like a support network so you feel supported by your fellow students by your faculty um, by the staff, it's like everyone is a part of your team. You know, you're not necessarily being taught to. Your your instructors are are working with you, and so you feel so much support, and you're you're so that you're inspired to do well. But you're also inspired to be a part of that support network. You know, while you're there, and and after you leave as an alumnus, and so you, you know, those are that giving back and. And that sort of uh, teamwork and 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 the opportunities that uh, that I had available to me coming out of there. I mean, I work in sport publishing now. That I would have not even remotely considered that as a job opportunity or career. I'm um, going into a program like that, and so it, it, pretty cool, pretty great experience. Yeah. It, well, and you mentioned the the point of giving back, and um, if I'm not mistaken, you're you're a sessional instructor, so you've used the skills or you're applying the skills that you've learned in your undergrad and teaching it to others. Uh, I guess, what do you teach? Why do you do it? I teach what I'm asked to. <laughs> um, this is more specifically, right now, actually, this semester, I'm teaching us uh, sales in sports, so revenue generation in sport. Um, so, so that would be ticket sales and sponsorship sales, uh, funding and fundraising, things like that. So, um, you know, I have a, a specialty in that. I did, I did do, a, uh, I, I did work in sport elsewhere in my career before. 
um, I, I came into this publishing role. But, um, you know, it's not just in, in sessional instructing, but it's I, I just, you know, I just love staying involved. It's such a great experience. So that's really a, the, the core reason why my experience at HK is the core reason why I'm involved with the Alumni Association and I sit on those committees and, um, you know, why, why I give back financially to the institution. Uh, it's It really all is because I felt so supported and I felt an importance in making sure I support, you know, in the future. And so and it's inspiring. It's inspiring. And it's important to help students. I was helped. So I feel that there's a, you know, the, the whole pay it forward thing is important to me. So. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you sharing that really, really great points. Um, Jake, we'll get back to you. I, I'm excited to talk about your, your current role now. Um, so stay tuned folks that are watching. We'll get back to Jake in, in just a second here. Um, uh, but going up to the, the top, right. Uh, Talking to Chad. Chad is the director of operations uh, at the Center for Human Performance and Health. What does your role entail? What does this portfolio include? Well, thanks so much for having me this afternoon. I'm really excited about the opportunity to talk about the CHPH. So I am the director of operations, and my role is to really oversee the daily operations of the center and to manage the different programs operating within the center. So for those of you that might not know, the Center for Human Performance and Health, or CHPH as we like to, to cut it down to, is located within the Faculty of Human Kinetics, uh, which is comprised of both an academic department of kinesiology and then the Department of Athletics and Recreational Services. And really our goal is to help create a more vibrant society by uniquely delivering community programs in, in three distinct areas. And the first of those being an active and healthy living. And so some examples include uh, from a programming perspective is running exercise programs for adults with an intellectual disability and autism, uh, cancer patients and cancer survivors, as well as our own university students who have mental health concerns. Uh, we're also investigating the use of laser therapy in the treatment of Parkinson's disease and knee osteoarthritis. The second main portfolio in the CHPH is around sport performance. So running high performance and physiological testing programs for our local elite athletes who are trying to make it to the next level, whether that's a provincial team, a national team, or, you know, the pinnacle of being an Olympic or pro athlete, and also different sporting organizations and trying to get physical literacy into our younger athletes to play sports safely. Uh, a big part of this portfolio definitely is integrating with Lancer Athletics, uh, which has been super exciting, and working with all our varsity teams and, and trying to really develop that elite sport performance. And so offering help in areas of, again, physiological testing, nutrition, sports psychology, strength and conditioning, and even on the sport management side of things. So how do they connect with their alumni, uh, fundraising, game day operations, and things like that. And then the last, the last is really about workplace health and safety. And, and from our office workers to our factory line workers, our first responders and our healthcare, you know, how can we help guide a safer and healthier work environment? And then within these three capacities, our, our main objective is to create a multidisciplinary research hub uh, to provide exceptional applied learning experiences, uh, which we hope to do for our students and to offer research driven community programming. So we really wanna service, you know, the people of Windsor Essex County and, and give them access to resources that maybe we don't have right now. It, it seems like a huge portfolio. Uh, it seems a lot to be research based and um, a lot of other types of support services for students involved with um, athletics. Uh, how did you get involved with this, Chad? It seems like a great uh, organization to be a part of and a great entity at the University of Windsor. Yeah, so uh, my background is in high performance sports, specifically strength and conditioning. Uh, when I took my initial experiential learning position at the University of Windsor, I really stayed connected with some of the varsity teams and tried to stay engaged on the strength and conditioning side of things. And then that led to trickling into doing research and kind of strength and conditioning and, you know, getting involved with different kind of clinical populations around exercise. You know, I, I really truly believe exercise is medicine. And so exercise is kind of the heart of, of what I, I do. And then a couple of years ago, the, the opportunity came up to, to get involved in it. And I was really excited to jump at it. You know, I'm super thrilled to work with amazing faculty members in our department, amazing coaches, staff, students, student athletes. Uh, it's just a, a great way to be connected. Well, it seems like you're bringing definitely a, a variety of, of knowledge to the table and to your role. Um, can students access any of these support networks and these services that you offer? If so, how? 
Yeah, so they could easiest would be to reach out to me at chad s at uwindsor.ca. Uh, they can email me. We do take between 15 and 20 students a year directly working in the center. And then there's lots of different opportunities around the center to get engaged, whether it's with our faculty members in their research labs, uh, in the research programs, in the community programs I talked about, so the exercise programs with, with cancer and, and adults with intellectual disability, athletic therapy. So we're really, really trying to promote a lot of uh, work integrated learning opportunities for our students to take advantage of kinesiology students, but we have had students uh, from main campus. I know HK, we're on the other side of the tracks, um, but we do have a lot of, of students coming from main campus and getting engaged with us as well, which is excellent. That's really awesome, Chad. Lots of great uh, research-based opportunities for those students at the Center for Human Performance and Health. Well, Chad, thanks for sharing that. And we'll, we'll get back to Chad in just a second um, to learn more about what he's doing outside of the office. Chad, thanks so much. So going back to uh, Margaret, let's talk about the You Will Discover conference. I know you're very involved with that. Uh, what is it? How can students participate? So I sit on the You Will Discover Research Conference Steering Committee. So the You Will Discover Conference, it's an annual research conference that the University of Windsor hosts um, for the purpose of showcasing undergraduate and graduates um, outstanding work being performed by our students on campus. Um, the presentations can range from both qualitative to quantitative studies, um, showcasing various creative work and performances, and several additional forms of scholarship. The attendance is entirely free and it's an opportunity for um, students and anyone to learn about um, new disciplines of study. Anyone can sign up for the conference as an attendee. I think for me personally, before I started my own research and began working at the Office of Research and Innovation Services, supporting and promoting research, as an undergraduate student, um, I had a very limited knowledge when it came to the research happening on campus. Um, so this conference is an excellent opportunity for students who were in my position to learn and potentially get involved or connect um, with the research community at University of Windsor and in your area of interest. Um, here at the University of Windsor, we generate millions in research revenue annually and um, research serves to, you know, advance our collective understanding of the world um, and it benefits overall societal welfare as well as creates new opportunities and enhances the overall quality of life. Um, so it's a really exciting thing. And I think that if more undergraduate students maybe um, hear a little bit more um, and learn how to get involved, it almost opens up a new, um, I always say, um, ever since I started research, it was almost like I opened up like Pandora's box of my brain. I just started changing my perceptions and the way that I thought about things. Um, and it's really benefited me and changed the way that I think so if you would like to sign up as an attendee, um, I have a link to the registration page that I will send to Lyndon to um, provide. And please feel free to reach out to uh, myself. I'm in the Faculty of Business um, for any questions about research um, or about the conference, or you can contact the team at youwilldiscover at uwindsor.ca um, to answer any questions that you may have. Awesome. Thanks, Margaret. And if I'm not mistaken, is this the uh, the correct website for those looking to access um, information? Is it uh, scholar.uwindsor.ca slash uh, you will discover? Is that? No, I have a Qualtrics survey um, to gather attendee information. Um, awesome. I will provide you with that link. Yes, we will we'll be uh, sure to put it in the chat. And it sounds like a great opportunity to learn more about research. And then can students actually present their research findings and um, things that they've been working on? Yeah, so um, the student lineup that we have had already submitted their proposals um, for the March 1st deadline. And those will be the presentations that attendees can um, listen to. Awesome. Well, it sounds very exciting. And um, Maggie will be there. And there's also a link that I'll put in the chat for more information. So thanks so much for sharing that. So going back to, to Chad, uh, Chad, let's talk a little bit more about um, the work you're doing now um, at a publishing company focused specifically on human kinetics. Tell us more. Talking to me. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Jake, sorry. Yes. No, no, no worries. I, I thought the I thought you jumped to Chad. That would have been fine by me too. Chad, if you have some answers for that, that'd be great. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. I mean, um, I was in the sport management stream, so you know specifically um, you know, how to manage a business and how to manage people and and those pieces. But taking kind of more of a thirty thousand foot view of it, um, what I really took away was you know that importance of giving back. I've sort of taken it in my career as well. And, and yeah, I'm, you know, managing the Canadian office of human kinetics publishers, it seems like the ties are, are pretty obvious and significant. And it's, and there are, of course, um, you know, it helps having been through a degree in this topic in speaking to the many authors and uh, lecturers that, that we talk to building the partnerships that we build, but giving back for me has really been in, um, pro, in producing content um, specific to Canada. That was something that we, we hadn't done a ton of um, at Human Kinetics Publishers, and we do now. And so, so I've hired a number of HK grads to help do that as well. Many of our authors have been uh, HK grads or are currently um, uh, even in the faculty. To give some examples, you know, since we sort of launched this Canadian acquisitions program, we've produced content on curling. We worked with Football Canada to produce the first Canadian football coaching book. Um, we work, CanFit Pro is, is Canada's leading uh, fitness certifier. We produce their personal training manual. Um, we, we're a partner of PHE Canada, which is like the national organization for physical and health educators. We do their online education content for teachers. We've produced a textbook for grade 9, 10, 11 phys ed called Fitness for Life Canada. And that's really sort of transitioning into more um, teaching fitness and, and personal health and wellness. Sarah Woodruff, who's in the faculty right now, she just authored a book for us, uh, Fitness and Wellness in Canada. And that's an intro level, that's a, a university text for that intro level personal wellness course that you would take. Um, an, uh, a graduate that I went to school with, Carly Adams, just um, uh, was the lead editor on a book called The um, Sport and Recreation in Canadian History, which we just released, which is the first there's been other sport, Canadian sport history books, but this is the first book that really tackles colonialization and um, racism and uh, indigenous peoples and reconciliation and, and those experiences in sport and recreation. So it's timely um, um, and, and a really incredible resource. Um, um, what else? We've done a, a leading textbook for physical called Physical and Health Ed Education in Canada, which is a textbook used in uh, B ed programs, bachelor of education programs for teaching teachers how to teach phys ed. So there's been a lot of, uh, I've really tried to focus on, on supporting the Canadian community and, and particularly in, in, in this realm in physical activity and health and sport in, in delivering content that, um, that I think um, gets, allows us to showcase, you know, and this is content that's you know, we're not being consumed just in Windsor. This is, you know, nationally um, used content. And so, so it's pretty exciting. And, 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 and one of the key takeaways really for me that, uh, that I was able to apply into my work now. So did you ever think that you'd be involved with, with a human kinetics publisher and working for them as managing director? No, short answer. <laughs> it was just something that, that fell on your lap and you, you went with it. Yeah, they publishing is an accidental profession. That is a publishing world joke, I guess. Now we um, <laughs> human kinetics publishers doesn't act so much like a publisher. We really act more like a, an organization in the sport and physical activity realm, uh, and so that's why we undertake partnerships. We do things differently than than a, a traditional publishing house would. We partner with major orgs, like I mentioned. We just signed a. Big. Uh, we started a big partnership with Coaching Asso Association of Ontario during the uh, during covid recently be to help deliver online education to coaches who were looking for for you know maintaining their skill set um and so we don't act like a traditional publisher i guess but uh, but it is a it is a publishing job nonetheless and and very much accidental so i worked in in sport i went down south to do a graduate degree at uh, university of massachusetts and then i came back up and worked in i worked in boston for a little bit and then worked in toronto and and uh, in sport and um, and this job opportunity was here. It was opportunity to come home and uh, and I came back and then I was you know sort of promoted into this role I'm, I am now. Well, it sounds like a very uh, unique profession and uh, something that just it came to you. It wasn't you didn't plan for it. And I think many other students are um, 
they may or not may or may not have planned for the careers that they have once they've graduated. And I think it, it happens to many of us. So I appreciate you sharing the insight and also talking about um, how you applied the knowledge that you gained in your undergrad um, to your current role today. Thanks so much. Right. Jake. Thank you. So going to, to J uh, Chad, uh, I, I mixed up Jake and Chad almost, but um, to, to the actual Chad, uh, what experiences have you been involved with outside of uh, your working environment um, at the University of Windsor to get involved as, as a staff member? Uh, so something outside of my job related to campus, it's a great question. I, I would say uh, uh, getting out and watching our Lancer athletes compete, uh, whether it's at the Capri Center watching the hockey teams, you know, score goals with the band in the stands or what we wouldn't do to spend a sunny day at a alumni field right now watching soccer and football compete or, you know, to be immersed in the enthusiastic crowd with the thunder sticks at the Dennis Farrell Fieldhouse to watch our volleyball team and, and basketball teams compete. If you haven't witnessed Lancer Corner at a track and field event, it's a must. You know, I just think it's really great to, to see our Lancer athletes compete. Uh, they work tremendously hard in the classroom, you know, on the field, off the field. They're great role models. They're great in our community. Uh, you know, they're, they're really the leaders of our next generation of athletes. Lancer events are a great family experience. My kids love going, getting a fist pump from Winston or hoping a straight puck goes over the glass that they can run down faster than the kid beside them. Uh, you know, I do anything right now to, to be able to go to a Lancer game after a, a year of sitting in our home offices at our desks. But yeah, I think it's a really a great environment. And hopefully when our teams are back, I'll see a bunch of you out there. Yes, and I'm excited. I know many others are excited to to get back out on, on the field and uh, especially our, our varsity athletes um, looking to play and be involved. Uh, Chad, has it been an eye-opening experience going to the games and your current role? Um, have they Has it helped you at all participating? Yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of gone to the Lancer games, I guess, since I got here, uh, but definitely now in my role, I you know, I think it's important to get out and see the athletes that we have the privilege to work with uh, compete. There's, you know, there's nothing better than watching an athlete uh, achieve their goal after the work they've put in. The same as it's, you know, it's the best email I get is when a student emails me that they got into chiropractic school or physiotherapy school, or they, they got the job that you, you know, you had the reference phone call with the employer. So, you know, just watching our students succeed and, and reaching their goals. I think that's the best part of, of working at the university. And, you know, it just keeps you motivated and excited. And now that I'm getting old and I've been here for 17 years, I get to see them, you know, a lot of athletes that I haven't seen in a long time or students and with their families and their kids competing and makes the, makes the getting old part fun, I guess. <laughs> well, it definitely seems to be a very heartwarming experience for you being out, getting involved um, at, at the games and then also um, in your role and all the great positive messages that you hear from your students um, that you're helping. So Chad, Jake, Margaret, thanks so much for, again, participating in this. I think this we had a great conversation. Um, each of you have totally different backgrounds, which was really fascinating to hear. Um, lots of perspectives on students, alumni, faculty, staff. Um, we've touched on it all today, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Slendon, thank Thanks you. So Thanks, everyone. And those watching, I appreciate your, your time today and tuning in for another episode of the Windsor Wednesday show. We'll see you soon. Great job, Lyndon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye.